Um, Sean? Oh, well, you did. Thank you. Okay, now this is what, this is important, and you see this in Lerone Bennett, and Alan elaborates on this. Very important. In this 17th century, particularly mid 17th century, the early years, right? Conditions for African American, European uh, American laborers and chattel bond servants were very similar. Through 1676, and at that time, the time of Bacon's Rebellion, three quarters of the bond servants were still European Americans, right? Um, in fact, the conditions were very hard. I'm not saying this was a Garden of Eden, right? Or your paradise or whatever. They, they didn't survive their first year, many of them, right? In the, particularly in the early years. Um, but again, 17th century, most of the plantation laborers were chattel bond servants. Sean? <coughs> Status of African Americans. Again, this is not the Kunta Kinte version of history where Kunta Kinte comes and encounters a full blown system. 17th century Virginia was very different. In 17th century Virginia, African Americans, not all, right, but not all English either, right, uh, exercised marriage rights, exhibited social mobility, had some had significant land holding, some were uh, owners of European American bond laborers. They manifested many forms of resistance. Some voted, they had voting rights, right? Come on. 17th century, the record makes clear, and this is how Allen sums up based on going through all those primary records. The relative social status of African Americans and European Americans at that time can be determined to have been indeterminate. It was being fought out, and it wasn't white against black, because there was no white yet, right? There were other factors in the class struggle, and the issue of slavery and freedom was being fought out. Sean, next. Here's an example, and this is a very important one, particularly people interested in, in family history, women's history, uh, so much and, and so key to the system that winds up getting developed. This is the case of Elizabeth Key. And this is another form. Alan goes page after page of the various forms of resistance. <coughs> Running away, fighting, going to court, you know, all the different ways, you know, uh, that people chose to resist and, and decided to resist. Elizabeth Key was a child of a European American father and an African American mother. She was scheduled to complete her term of service when the estate she was bonded to sought to impose lifetime bond servitude. Now there were these efforts by the ruling class to try and impose bond servitude, to try and lengthen the servitude of people, to try and impose bond servitude. But this contradicted the English common law principle, partis sequitur patrum, forgive my Latin. The condition of the child was the condition of the father. That's the law in England. This is still an English colony. She goes to court, Elizabeth Key, and she argues two things. Sean? She argues that um, on the basis of traditional principle that her Christian baptism and rearing barred her from being held as a slave. We have some precedent for that in the, in the, uh, in the law and uh, the, just in general, in the, uh, not so much in the law, but in the principle it was upheld often. And the common law principle that the social status of the child followed that of the father. That's her argument in court. And she prevails. She wins. Six years later, they got to change that. They're moving in a different direction because the implications are, well, they change it and they take a different course and they, they say no. They, they, not in her case, but in a different case, they establish the principle of partis sequitur ventrum, descent through the mother. Because this means all of those women, those chattel bond servant women, who are taken advantage of by men, right? Their children will be chattel bond servants, right? And this is what the system needs, right? But that's not the way it was first. So it is people like historians like Gutman and people like this write about the Af history of the African American family. They start in 1790 and stuff. This is so significant because it's a qualitative change, right? And people, this Elizabeth Key case I think is very important. <laughs> Status of African Americans. So what Alan's arguing, the white race system of racial oppression did not and could not have existed in the 17th century. He bases it on the following facts. Class solidarity, which we're going to get into. The absence of an all-class coalition of European Americans. Tremendous class differences, right? Lack of substantial intermediate stratum. Sean? Sure. 